Hey, what is up mortals? It is Esperk VA here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 15 of What If Deku Was the Shield Hero. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. And so, we begin. Izuku, I got your message, and are you sure this is Philo? Because she looks very different. Izuku let out a sigh from atop Philo, who appeared very different from what she had looked like both the day before and this morning. The day before, she had looked like any philolial, white feather ostrich-like creature with several of her feathers along her chest colored pink along with the twin long feathers protruding from her forehead like horns. Now, she no longer looked like that, though she did have the same color pattern. Now, it almost looked like Izuku was riding a large chicken. One of the positive benefits of this new form was that people looked at it in surprise. As the students milled their way toward the gate of UA, they stared at the giant blue-eyed philolial with curiosity rather than sending their disgust to Izuku, as they had the day before. There was also the fact that like this, Izuku felt like Philo could carry more than one person easier, and that she seemed faster than a normal philolial. Uh, yeah, it's Philo, all right. I checked the school's app this morning, and it confirmed that Philo wasn't at her stable. My guess is she broke out during the night and made her way to my apartment. But why would she do that? Because I wanted to be with my master. Philo's words, spoken so innocently, caused everyone in the area to take a massive step backward. Many had their mouths hanging open in shock, their eyes wide as Izuku just stood there scratching the back of his head. She, she talks? Of course I talk. What a funny thing to say. Master, I'm hungry. Can we get some more food? At that, Izuku raised an eyebrow as he looked at his large philolial. Didn't... My mom give you four helpings of breakfast this morning? Philo nodded. It was really tasty, but I still want some more. Okay, well, this is all really strange, but your message also said that Philo had gotten into your apartment. I have to wonder how she managed to do that when she's... this big? Izuku let out a groan as he opened up his backpack, pulling out a thick cloak that he had brought from home. A cloak that he may or may not have bought last year while trying to decide what his hero costume would look like. Okay, Philo. Philo gave Izuku a quick salute with a large feathery wing before she was suddenly surrounded by a large puff of smoke. Without waiting for it to dissipate, Izuku quickly flung the cloak around the still obscured figure. After another moment or two, the smoke began to clear, revealing to the crowd a girl with long blonde hair, blue eyes, and small white wings poking out from underneath the cloak. Stunned silence filled the air, everyone looking on at the scene in shock at how something like this was even possible. Eh, uh, that's how she got in. Once the shock had mostly died off, Izuku led both Philo and Raftalia straight to the classroom as quickly as he could. With each step, he could feel the judging gazes of the students of Yue upon him once more as they looked at the young girl holding his hand. A part of him wished that Philo could have just taken on her philolial form to make this less awkward, but he had a feeling people would have complained about having a giant philolial walking down the hallway anyway. As soon as the trio were in front of the door, Izuku swiftly opened it and ignored the sudden silence that now filled the room as his eyes scanned for a certain onyx-haired girl. Seeing that she was in her seat, Izuku rushed over to her while ignoring everyone else who tensed up. Yoyorozu! What did you sell me? The rich girl looked taken aback by this as Philo stood next to the green-haired youth. I, I beg your pardon? The philolial egg you sold me! At first she was turning out like a normal philolial, but now she's, uh... Izuku paused for a moment, turning to look at Philo, who looked back at him with innocent eyes that were both curious and worried at the same time. At the same time, Yoyorozu crossed her arms across her chest as she took on an unamused expression. I'll have you know that there was nothing wrong with the eggs I sold everyone. All the philolial eggs were of top quality, and those that hatched will grow normally under proper care. Please do not lay your mishandling of the creature at my feet like it's my fault. Now, if you don't think you can handle the responsibility, then you can sell it to- Master, are you going to sell me? Philo's worried words silenced Yayorozu while Izuku stood there wide-eyed as bullets of sweat began running down his face. The boy felt like crying in shame, fully realizing how this sounded and how it was probably not helping his case right now. Bit by bit, he turned his head to see that no one, not even Sue, could hide their shocked expressions. Even Bakugo, who had been leaning back in his chair with his eyes closed, was now staring at Izuku with his eyes wide and his mouth open with no sounds coming from him. Then, as the door slid open to reveal an eternally tired Mr. Aizawa, Mineta jumped onto his desk and pointed a finger at Izuku. I don't understand. How do you of all people keep getting all the chicks even when your name is basically crap? Not only that, but you managed to get a little girl to call you Master? Tell me your secret now. Tell me how I can get the same treatment, or else... 
As Mineta continued to shout, Izuku noticed out of the corner of his eye Philo staring at the tiny teen with puffed cheeks and clenched fists. Before Izuku could say anything, Philo transformed into her floleal form in a puff of smoke, with the cloak she had been wearing now resting on her back. All of the students leapt from their seats while Mr. Aizawa began rubbing his eyes with a look on his face that screamed, What the heck was in that coffee? But Philo, she didn't notice any of this, as she kept her gaze on a trembling Mineta and slowly licked her beak. What is this? I don't know, this is what I was talking about. Philo seems to be able to change from a philoleal to a human. Wait, you got that and I was stuck with this stupid bird? I, I demand a redraw. And this time, I want one that can transform into a hot, big... Netta got no further as Philo, in a quick motion, lowered her head down and swallowed the great parrot teen's head with a nom sound. As she rose to her standing height, the small arms and legs of Mineta began to swing, thrash, and kick about as he tried to free himself from the beaked clutches of the angry avium. Soon, muffled screams could be heard as Philo began to lightly shake Mineta back and forth. That was when Izuku noticed something. Mr. Aizawa activated his quirk, sending the full force of his glare right at Philo. However, much to Izuku's surprise, his teacher looked surprised as well when nothing happened. Philo just continued on like nothing had happened to her. Slowly, the man deactivated his quirk before rubbing his temples. Midoriya, could you please tell her to let go of Mineta? Class will be starting soon, and I'd rather not waste too much time. Uh, right. Philo, let him down, please. Kay. With that, Philo opened her beak enough to release her hold on the grape-themed pervert, sending him flying across the room. Mineta hit the wall with a splat, his head dripping with saliva as he slowly began to slide down to the floor. I thought he would taste like those yummy grapes your mom gave us for breakfast, Master. But he tasted yucky. Then, with another puff, Philo turned back into her human form, further surprising Mr. Aizawa. As Izuku quickly rushed over to cover up the now blonde-haired girl, he began to explain rapidly what happened. Nobody said anything, just staring in disbelief as Izuku spoke. Well, all but Aizawa, who seemed to grow more interested. Once or twice, the man looked from the innocent-looking angel girl to the stain that was Mineta, but never said a word until Izuku finished. I see. Well, that explains the report I got from Nezu detailing a breakout in the Floleal stable. Have you tried getting your clothing? Slowly, Izuku nodded. Yeah, uh, me and my mom, we tried a few things that might fit her this morning, but they, uh... Sort of didn't change with her, and ended up shredding when she transformed. I was sort of hoping that I could request getting her something from the Hero Support course. They uh, make all sorts of costumes for heroes who have quirks that alter their bodies, like costumes that uh, stretch with gigantification and stuff. Aizawa nodded. I thought that might be the case. The man then went to his desk and wrote something down on a piece of paper before handing it to Izuku. Head down to the support labs and hand that to Power Loader. Once that man reads it, he'll see to it that either he or some of his top students will begin making something to make her look presentable. Can't have her in class with just a cloak on, now can we? As Izuku, Raftalia, and Philo stared at their teacher, Ida, after finally getting over his shock, stood up and began making chopping motions with his arms like the fake robot that he is. Mr. Aizawa, surely you're not suggesting that we allow one who has attacked a member of the Hero Course into our class? Such an act would surely cause chaos if others learned that all they had to do was attack one of us to gain entry into such a well-sought-after position within this fine school. And just where would you like me to send her while Midoriya is in class? Back to the stables looking like this? Tell me something. How heroic would that look to an outsider? Uh, well, I, uh, th that is to say, Mr. Aizawa then gave you a powerful stare that caused him to take his seat. All it would take is one picture of Philo in her human form sitting in the philodial stable to cause an uproar with the media. We would have animal rights activists and human rights groups hounding us for answers as to what is going on, wasting our precious time. I'm also pretty sure that the Hero Public Safety Commission will want to weigh in on this. Right now, I'm working under the assumption that something like this hasn't happened before. Am I correct, Miss Yayorozu? In her seat, Momo nodded as she still looked rather dumbfounded by Philo. Then what we have here is a unique situation, a philoleal with a humanification quirk. The importance of this should not be underestimated, nor should it be neglected. Such actions would be irrational. Therefore, it would be prudent to have her learn how to help in an official hero capacity, so that she will not be a hindrance while also keeping an eye on her. That, and we would waste time every time she decided to break into the building trying to find Midoriya. 
You mean I get to stay with my master? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! With that, Philo rushed over and began hugging the leg of the long, dark-haired hero with a happy smile on her face. As for Mr. Aizawa, he stood there for a moment before sighing and patting the girl on the head. I'm also sure that Nezu already knows what's going on. Knowing him, there's a desk being sent to this classroom right now just for you. But just to make this clear, if you disrupt my class, I will have you removed. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Good. Now both of you get going. Midoriya, I'll make the announcement for you. Nodding, Izuku took Philo by the hand and led her out of the room, and they both quickly made their way down to the support studio. However, just as Izuku was about to knock, a loud massive explosion sent the metal door flying off its hinges and towards the green-haired hero in training. Thankfully, the shield hero's reflexes kicked in, allowing the teen to raise his shield in time so that he could block before instantly deflecting the door so that it flew into the wall behind him. Then, as the smoke began to clear, a figure appeared within the smoke, spilling out of the doorway. Oh, looks like that baby needs to go back to the drawing board. Nice block, by the way. If Power Loader found out I hurt another passerby, he would have really chewed me out this time. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services, like Disney+. Plus. If you're from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU and Sony Spider-Man movies, but by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan for $99.99. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Okay, my latest baby is complete, but next time try and give me a challenge. Mei Hatsume threw back her head, laughing like a mad genius as she took a step back so that Izuku could inspect her work. Work she had volunteered for with equal enthusiasm when Power Loader had asked the class who would be willing to help Izuku with this project in exchange for more free time in the lab or extra credit. The speed at which she moved up to the pair made Izuku wonder if she had bothered waiting for Power Loader to finish talking before she had gotten out of her seat. As for the rest of the class, well, they had only given Izuku and Philo the briefest of looks before trying to pretend he didn't exist. May had gotten to work quickly, taking the pair into the back where several machines sat. There, May began feeding one of the machines that would help create specialized thread made from Philo's DNA. As she worked, Izuku quickly began to realize that May didn't know who Izuku was, nor did she seem to care. She even seemed to forget his name shortly after taking Philo's measurements, setting another machine to begin weaving up a dress for her. It was honestly refreshing after the last couple days. One thing that Izuku also came to realize was that May had a passion for what she did. It was hard not to notice the sparkle in the girl's cross-haired eyes as she thought of all the possibilities she could use these machines for, or the level of concentration she held while she worked. While he was more of a jeweler and potion maker, he could understand that level of joy she had when she finished the project, or was eager to move on to the next idea or project, and it was endearing. Now he stood there looking at Philo, who was dressed in a white dress with frills that reminded him of her feathers, as well as a big blue bow. Honestly, he was impressed that she had done all of this in under an hour. I've been meaning to try out this process since school started. I heard that the last time we used this machine was when we made an outfit for a guy who could phase through objects, but this is probably the first time we ever made something for someone who could completely change their form. Master, what do you think? Does it look cute? Izuku nodded. It, it does. But let's see if it works. Philo nodded. Taking a step back, Izuku braced himself in case things didn't turn out right. However, this fear proved in vain as the young girl took on her philolial form without so much as a stitch of clothing falling to the ground. In fact, the dress seemed to have vanished completely, with the only trace left of it being the bow that was now around the bird's neck. A moment later, and Philo turned back into her human form. That's incredible! Thanks for all your hard work, Hatsume! May grinned as she quickly approached Izuku with a clipboard in hand. Well then, Shield Boy, if you really want to show your appreciation, how about you make me your exclusive go-to support person? Just fill out this paperwork and I can get started making all sorts of wonderful babies for you. As she said that last part, Izuku's face turned red, first Philo calling him master in public and now Hatsume talking about making babies for him. With her class right behind her, no less. Honestly, he didn't know what was more embarrassing. After filling out the application for Hatsume's support work, Izuku left the support department with Philo following right behind him. The blonde-haired Philolio was giggling and twirling around in her new dress, quickly running up to any students in front of him to show it off. Midoriya! Izuka heard the scream, quickly turning around and raising his shield just in time to block a strike from the spear-wielder's weapon. As the glass from the nearby window shattered, shards flying all around, you could hear Philo's cries as well as the shouts of the other students. 
What is it with you and attacking people at random? You could have seriously hurt someone. Shut it, Midoriya. Now where is she? Izuku let out a groan as Motoyasu moved back a bit, his spear still pointed right at the shield user's chest. Who? Multi? Look, I don't know what she told you this time, but... No, I heard you brought a little girl to school. One with angel wings. I heard from several people that you brought her here. The larger teen then paused, a blush appearing on his face. To be honest, I sort of have a thing for angels. Goodbye, Motoyasu. As Izuku turned around, Motoyasu seemed to come back to his senses as he readied his spear once more. But before he could say or do anything, Motoyasu noticed Philo standing several dozen feet away from where the pair were standing. With a grin, the older teen rushed over to Philo, where he then got on one knee. And what might your name be? Philo smiled innocently. My name's Philo. Philo, what a wonderful name. I promise I will save you from whatever wickedness and villainy that Midoriya has already subjected you to. The Master hasn't done anything bad to me. But I like carrying him from his home to here. It was a lot of fun. A small whine escaped Izuku's lips as he stared in disbelief at the young Philoliel. Of all the things she had to say, those were some of the worst things. That would not make his situation any better. In fact, he could already see Moriyasu grit his teeth in rage while also increasing his grip on his weapon. Midoriya, how could you make this little girl carry you like she was some stinking Philoliel? Have you no shame? Before Motoyasu could say anything else or turn around, Philo sniffed. That was mean. Then, in a puff of smoke, Philo turned back into her filolial form as she glared down at Motoyasu, who looked like he was having trouble processing what just happened right before his eyes. Then, before you could suffer a fate similar to Mineta's, or worse, the sound of a whip cracking caught the attention of everyone in the hallway. It was then that Izuku noticed that Principal Nezu was standing in the middle of the corridor his paws behind his back as he surveyed the destruction to his school, while Midnight stood behind him with her whip in hand. Oh my, I was just on my way to the support department to introduce myself to that young lady only to stumble upon a most unfortunate sight. It seems like you have yet to fully learn your lesson, Mr. Kitahara. The rules have not changed. Neither in the past three years you have been here, nor in the last couple of days. Attacking a fellow student outside of training is certainly not allowed. Not only that, but you have now damaged school property. This certainly won't do. Look, uh, Principal Nezu, I, I heard that Midoriya had brought a young girl to school against her will, and Nezu held up a paw, silencing the team. Tell me something, Mr. Kitahara. What would you have done had you seriously harmed Mr. Midoriya based on these trusted sources of yours? Hmm? Somehow I doubt Mr. Midoriya's family, or the Hero Safety Commission, would accept such an excuse. In fact, I do believe that many would ask why you never considered any other scenario, like Midoriya bringing his younger sister to school or something like that. Or why you didn't bother bringing your concerns to a member of the staff. I'm sure by the end you would be lucky to walk out with them taking away your provisional hero license. To be honest, I'm rather tempted to make a few calls and have it revoked due to your recent trend of poor decision-making, but that will have to wait for a bit. Midnight, would you kindly escort Mr. Kitahara to my office? I shall be along shortly, to go over his punishment once I am done here. Midnight nodded before gesturing the Motoyasu to follow her. The teen complied, but not before shooting a brief glare at Izuku as if this were his fault. When they had left, Izuku bowed before the principal. Thank you. Nezu chuckled a little as he walked closer to Izuku and Philo, doing his best not to step on the glass shards. There is no need for thanks, Mr. Midoriya, though the sentiment is appreciated. I was simply doing my job as principal and enforcing school rules. Nezu now stood in front of Philo, her large blue eyes looking down at the smaller creature in a way that Izuku hoped didn't mean she wanted to see what he tasted like. It is a pleasure to meet another animal such as myself that has managed to achieve a level of intelligence not normally associated with that of our species. Simply marvelous. I never thought I'd live to see the day. You say such big words. Nezu chuckled at that. While I am a learned individual with a quirk that has vastly increased my intellect, though it seems like in exchange for being able to transform into a human form, you did not receive the same level of intelligence. You appear to be at the same level of development as that of a young child. Not surprising, seeing as you are only a few days old. Perhaps in time. Nezu then shook his head. Oh dear, I had so wanted to have a nice pleasant chat with both of you over a cup of tea. That, however, will have to be postponed for a later date now. Such a pity. But, young Philo, I would like to ask, are you happy right now? Yes, Master is taking such good care of me. I'm really happy. 
Nezu nodded at that. I'm glad to hear that. It is my hope that he shall continue to do so, and that you never suffer the same horrors that I went through. For there will be consequences. With that, Nezu walked away. When Izuku finally returned to his classroom, he discovered that, indeed, an extra desk had been delivered to 1A. The desk was smaller than the others, placed right next to Izuku so that he could help Philo out. On the desk was a special ID made for Philo that would register her as a student. Izuku also discovered that Ida had been voted in as the new vice rep of Class 1A. While the teens sat there with pride, Izuku had heard that Mr. Aizawa had said that they would all have to live with their choice for the rest of the year, that he wouldn't waste any more time. Though Ida probably didn't know how close he got to becoming class rep. I thought about stepping down as class rep in protest, Ribbit. Then Mr. Aizawa told me it was your decision. When class finally ended for the day, Izuku said his farewells to Raftalia before heading home with Philo. As he left, however, he noticed a blush on the Tanaki girl's face as she stammered out how surprised she was that Philo was going to be living at the Midoriya's. Well, I need to make sure she's properly taken care of, and I can't just leave her here. What's wrong, Raftalia? Jealous I get to spend more time with Master than you? No, no, I'm not. As the days went by, Izuku's days were a struggle. At home, both he and his mother would find their mailbox stuffed with letters with only his name scribbled onto the envelope. Their contents were not kind, to say the least, so much so that the pair just began to throw them away without opening them. And whenever the pair went out, they were always on edge with the looks people were giving them. Still, the mother and son duo put on their brave faces for the newest member of their family. After getting over the shock, Inko had quickly taken to Philo, and before anyone knew it, began thinking of her as the daughter she never had. And to prevent any more issues, Philo had been given the guest room to sleep in. At school, while things weren't getting any better, they were at least not getting any worse. The class continued to ignore Izuku whenever they could, with the exceptions of Raftalia, Uraraka, Kirishima, Philo, and Bakugo. Speaking of Philo, classes were becoming a bit harder for him as he tried to divide his time helping the young Philolio with her own work provided by the school. Mostly, it was basic elementary school stuff to help her learn how to read and write. While there were some issues at first, she did learn rather quickly not to ask Izuku questions while the teachers were talking. But there were some highlights that made the days at school more bearable. May, for example, was asking him to spend his lunchtime in the support labs as she examined his shield so that she could make some improvements to his hero costume. Not only that, but she took the time to study Raftalia's and Philo's quirks as well, coming up with ideas that could help them all in the future. What those ideas were, he had no idea, as May seemed to be keeping them to herself for the moment. Izuku had also managed to get some new materials for his shields. After asking Sue, she agreed to give him a strand of her hair, and she wasn't the only one he had asked. Both President Mike and Mr. Aizawa had also agreed, after a bit of convincing. Then, finally, the day of the sports festival arrived. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our patrons, BD Flames, Ethan Davis, Terry Chill, Shifter Meals, Adam Zagel, Zill, XAV Beat 03, and Joshua Phelps. Secondly, I'd also like to thank all of our YouTube members, Toei Acosta, Rob the King, Sithlord906, CF2364, and Knuckles, Rimuo Tempest, Angel Juarez, Donald C. Stewart, Bryant Greer, and Demonized Fox. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Fourthly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years old and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the Recruitment Discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day.